37, Mr. Wright purchased the land here in the desert where we started Taliesin West. Then we built the shelter down in the wash. It was very primitive, <laughs> really primitive. And after we were on the desert for a while, we got tents, and that, of course, was very comfortable. And I lived in a tent for over four years. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I think it's a wonderful experience. You feel so close to the land, so close to the desert. It's wonderful. What we call the Desert Shelter Program has changed quite a bit. I remember years ago, it was simply you showed up here as an apprentice and we would give you a little sheep herder tent, which there's still some out there. And then if you wanted to do something a little bit more ambitious, you would design it and build it. And because of the time constraints on everybody, they were so busy, they were mostly quite simple. Yeah, I asked Mr. Wright if I could, I, I said I needed three days to work on my shelter. And he says, fine, fine. So I went off and worked on my shelter one day. The next morning, somebody came and said, Mr. Wright wants to see you. So I went to see him and he had some construction in mind. He says, well, I'd like want to do this, go get some boys and this and that. I guess he'd forgotten all about my three days. <laughs> Through the years, most of them just disappeared. They just evolved and, and then recycled themselves back into the desert. So the one that I used to have out there, there's no sign of it. The apprentices really have a great time expressing their creativity, and some of the designs are really quite intriguing. You were given, you could go out and t pick any, any place you wanted in the desert in a certain area, and you could pick any, any spot there. Um, and usually you had time to pour a slab, maybe build up wood sides, and then put your tent on top. And of course, my grandfather didn't want any permanent type structures going on. He wanted to see the desert uh, more open. Later on, towards the end, he allowed some of the senior apprentices to build more permanent structures out there. Some people did some wonderful stuff with, with the canvas and, and tent material. And I took a sheep herder's tent, and uh, you had flaps that closed on it. And I made a metal frame for it. And then I hinged it in the back so you could hinge the tent up and then you could open the flaps and then I had red panels put on the inside so when you opened them up and then the thing opened up like a flower and then you could close it all down again at night. It was very simple but fun. The Desert Shelter Project of the students here at the school is a chance to design something and build it and live in it. There's no other school that allows you that opportunity. So you put together all of the things you need to know about an architect in a very sort of focused way. It's not a large building, of course, so you, but you learn about the nature of materials, which Mr. Wright was very specific about. The nature of the material. What is the nature of concrete? What is the nature of stone? What is the nature of steel? what is the nature of glass, and you learn how to put these materials together in a small way. So you get very early in your life a chance, a taste, really, of construction and the problems that you find in construction. What's really cool is that if uh, a shelter or a tent structure started out in the 40s and the apprentice added a few things to it and then when left, graduated, someone else took that over and then did a few more things to it, that those structures just grew and changed over the years. I think by the 1970s, they started to get a little more sophisticated in materials and they started using steel. They became these really elaborate, a very sophisticated, very personal living space. But the tent is a great experience. 
you find out how difficult it is to build on a site. Although it's a miniature thing, it's very hard not to destroy the landscape, the natural landscape all around it, uh, just by walking there. That's one of the things people learn so much. Of course, they learn how good a builder they are, how good a designer they are, and uh, they, un they learn how much they understood about their own life when they try to live in this thing that doesn't work or does work. Well, I was living in this thing that I designed when the winds would come off the mountains at you know, 50 miles an hour and my roof would start shaking and I couldn't sleep. And, and to go through that kind of experience and realize that had I designed the roof so that it wouldn't flutter in the wind, I might have had a better night's sleep. Those were lessons that no one else could have taught me. It was, those were hard lessons, perhaps. I went on a field trip to Taliesin and West, and then I decided to enroll in architecture school. So now, a year and a half into architecture school, I have about 40% of my structure that I'm designing and building at Taliesin and West done. It's been a good few months of progress here. <laughs> if I wasn't enrolled in this program right now, not building the structure, when I graduate, I would have infinitely less knowledge about what's really needed to put something together, a building, a landscape. So learn by doing offers and makes you earn pride and respect for really good construction people. I'd say the most shocking moment of the shelter experience so far was when the structure was up, the concrete had been poured, and I lit it at night. And to see that thing glow like a lantern in the desert for the very first time was absolutely incredible. <laughs> 